I plead the blood of Holy Yahushua over this video and over the mind, body, and spirit of every child of Yah watching this video in Yahushua HaMashiach's home. Oh. So I did. I obeyed the Lord. And when I did, they just looked at me. How would each of you live tomorrow if you knew that you could not fail? And I explained to them that the limitations have been taken off their ministries and that it's open heaven now. And the Lord was saying to, to us, we need to let the Holy Spirit take us to heaven and look at our books. We need to pray in the Spirit. We need to yield to the Holy Spirit because He's our helper. He's the one that's going to counsel us and show us. So this is, this is how it all started with now, It's now, Written. By the way, how did they take this? I mean, I, I can, there are many pastors that unfortunately, for lack of better words, think they know it all. Yeah, well, the thing of it was, it, it actually stunned them. And, um, you know, that's kind of how it goes when you're dealing with both realms. This realm down here is a fallen world, and this realm is slow. And so that's how they responded to it. They had to let it seep in for a while. But I can assure you that that's what the Lord is saying to everyone right now in, in the body of Christ, is that the limits have been taken off, and it's your turn. That's what he's saying. It's your turn to jump in. Yeah. He, he gave you a phrase that it's rigged in your favor. What does that really mean? Well, when I was in heaven, Jesus showed me that everything was already written down before any of my days came into being, that Jesus himself wrote a book about me before he breathed me into my mother's womb. And he let me walk into, my, into his eyes, and I saw myself being formed in my mother's womb. And I saw that the book was already written. Now, everybody has a book, but if you, if you become a Christian and you engage with God, then you can ask God to help you to fulfill the, what is the perfect will of God, which is those things that are written in the book. So the Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. He wants to engage every believer and walk them right into the center of this. The only thing is, is that it's so intense in the perfect will of God that it causes you to go into a breakthrough mode where you break through from the enemy's strongholds. But then there's an overthrow where you literally throw the tables over that the enemy has set up. Like everything that is against you starts to go into an overthrow mode where the demons start to fly out away from you because of what is happening from the other realm. It's coming into this realm and manifesting. I've seen this happen. It happened to me and it's starting to happen in our services and it's completely hands free. I don't even have to lay hands on people. The whole room fills up with the glory of God. I've been in Kevin's meetings. And I can, well, and not, not only, mm -hmm. I mean, you always carried the presence of heaven because you were there mm -hmm. wherever you go. But it appears to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a real increase going on in your life. Yes, sir. And I believe that this is for everyone. And I'm not claiming to be anybody special. Jesus sent me back. He sent me back to a generation that is chosen at the end of this, of this dispensation to to show the glory of God, to show God out so that everyone in the world sees that we have a God who is most powerful and mighty. He's going to start visiting us. Amen. When, mm. I, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm so sensitive to this, but I see so many people today, they're trapped. They feel like they're victims, victims of circumstances victims of not enough in his education, victims of not having good money, enough money, victims of not being parented properly. And they spend their whole life being a victim. When did you realize you are no longer a victim? Sid, this is why, why you notice the difference in my meetings, because not that long ago, I woke up one morning, and what happened was, is I was going from breakthrough to breakthrough. So you would go from breakthrough to breakthrough, but then once you get through, then you need another breakthrough, and then you need another touch from God. And the Lord said, that's over with. We're going into overthrow, which is permanent, which means that the enemy starts to know who you are, and he can't stop you. He cannot stop you. And I, I realized that morning, Sid, that I was no longer a victim. I woke up one morning. I can show you where it is in my house. I woke up, and I, I saw into the enemy's eyes, and he realized that he had lost me. He no longer had any influence on me, and he had become the victim. And he doesn't even talk to me anymore because I give him a whooping every day. 
Did, did you hear it? I mean, so much truth just came out of your mouth. There is a new victim in town. It's called the devil, <laughs> not you. And did I hear you say you gave him a whipping every day? Yes, Sid. I actually was told by the Lord to take a two-by-four spiritually and, and just give him a good one over the head every morning. And so I just wake up swinging, just like Samson did with that donkey jawbone. I mean, seriously, I want to, I want to understand this. What do you do when you wake up? The first thing out of my mouth is I, I yell yes, because I'm saying yes to my books. And it wakes my wife up, and then she says yes. And then we go into warfare tongues. And when we go into warfare tongues, we start prophesying. And then I tell the devil that because me and God are going to be doing things today, you might want to stay out of the way. And I, and I start to remind him about the lake of fire. It's getting really hot, I heard, these days. And I start to prophesy his doom, and I start to, to, um, to pray for people that their eyes and their heart would be in light. And, I, and before you know it, fire from the altar of God is coming out of my mouth, and that's how I start my day. And me and my wife just start praying in the Spirit, praying out our books for that day, and we see miracles every day. We have, we have staff members that watch things happen every single day we have a miracle happen. It's because we're synchronizing ourselves with heaven. Tell me about the time you walked into the eyes of Jesus. Oh, that's a good one, Sid. I'm telling you. I know it is. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> well, I kept looking at his eyes because I was trying to figure out what color they were. And I was listening to him talk. And all of a sudden, he allowed me to walk right into him. And I walked down inside of him. And I watched him think of me. And I watched him form everything that he wanted me to do in my life. And then he formed me inside, and then he breathed me out, and I went into my mother's womb. And now I'm standing before him in the same spot that he breathed me out of. And I saw that the whole plan of God was already written, and that this is what he told me. He said, Kevin, I'm taking the limits off you. There's never been a time that I've limited you. He said, no one up here is limiting you. He said, we all love you up here. He said, no angel that's ever been sent to help anyone, including you, has ever thought they were going to fail. And he said, you know the Holy Spirit that you have inside of you? He said, the Holy Spirit has never thought you were going to fail. Everybody is for you. And something clicked in me. And so when I started to walk in this, and I saw the devil start to realize that he can't, he can't pull it over on me anymore. He started to back off in fear. And then he showed me, though, that Jesus showed me, he said, you got to take fire from the altar every day. So I started taking fire from the altar every day in prayer. I just picture myself just taking fire. And the angels just love that. So they start coming around me. Before you know it, the, the devil is nowhere to be seen. He doesn't even show up for any kind of an appointment anymore. And I mean, I'm telling you, this is overthrow. This is where the devil is, is, doesn't want want anyone to go. So just so you know, he's told me to tell everybody, the Lord has told me to tell everybody all over the world, all the dirty secrets of the devil, to tell that he doesn't want any Christian to hear this. It's rigged in your favor. He does not want anyone to know this. <laughs> now, just so I, I understand, when you're saying it's rigged in your favor, you're saying because you have the most wonderful, perfect plan for your life all written out, and everyone in heaven is rooting for you, and there's one liar that's trying to get you off a of base. But if he can't get you off a of base, what kind of life are people going to have? It's called favor, Sid, and it's really not fair to the people that are just looking on. They can't figure you out. But you start to move in this favor because I saw that the devil tries to make everything look random in a person's life, but there's no such thing as randomness in heaven. And I saw that he is trying to fool people into backing off. And I think that the most uh, important thing to hear here is Jesus told me that people, Christians, they back off from the devil because they're they fr they're afraid he's going to come at them. And the, the fact of it is, is he's not going to come at you. There's a certain point where he backs off because he's looking for weak people. And I, the last time I checked, the redeemed of the Lord are not weak people. <laughs>
Shabbat Shalom priests and welcome to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Messenger Paula and welcome back to the next part of this playlist. We are talking about the five trees in heaven. We're talking about the five people, the five stones, and the five trees. And these are the five steps. This chart you see behind you are the five steps of evolution. It is the five seals of the baptism rites, the five stages of enlightenment uh, that we have to go through in order to become mature, spiritual, spiritually mature sons of Holy Yahushua, his bridal army, the body of Christ in the last days, who will be doing the harvest and preparing the way for him to call us with a shout and for him to return. Hallelujah, praise his holy name. So as we saw last week in Priest Shanika's video, she was talking about the third dimension anointing. And I just wanted to point out, I pray that you all have seen the, the full video because it's very, very powerful, a very, very powerful word. And it is confirmation as to what we're studying here, because what I want you to understand is that she's saying the third dimension. Well, where are we right now in this playlist, priests? This is the first row that we've done. This is the second row, which we will finish today. And we are going unto the, you got it, the third row. This third row is the third dimension anointing that priest Shanika is talking about in that video. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's confirmation that this is where we are. We are entering the third row. Okay, and the whole point is we want to get to this fifth row because when you get to the fifth row is when, when we get to the fifth row is when we have Holy Yahushua calling us with a shout, ish. That's when we're ready for Holy Yahushua to call us with a shout. That's when we have become fully mature. So you have, as we've said in the past, one, two, three, Four, and then this screen right here makes five. That is the five dimensions. That is the five uh, levels of development. This is the portal in which Holy Yahushua comes through. And this is what we've been showing and proving uh, for this whole playlist. So if this is your first time uh, hearing me, seeing me, watching these videos, please go back in order and catch up. There's no way that I, I can explain all of it in one video, so please be obedient. This is the way that Ruach HaKadosh is teaching us and preparing us to be able to understand uh, this information, and you can't skip. Please watch the videos in order. If you need more information here on the screen, you can see our website, you can see the playlist, they're in order. Uh, go forth and prosper in Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name, I pray, Aman. So, this is where we are in this evolution. We are on the third row, and not only are we receiving our third dimension anointing priest, I just want to remind you that we are also entering into our third year. We received the message uh, four and a half years. Uh, we received the four and a half year message on December 6th, 2017. So uh, we got the message uh, four and a half years on uh, December 6th. 2017 and if we take today's date which is february 1st i didn't know today was february 1st <laughs> until just now it gives us two years and one month so we have two and a half years left of our training so two and a half years left and what do we have we're on the third row. We're entering the third row uh, next week. We're going to start talking about that in depth. And so that leaves what? One, two rows left. Do you see how it works out perfectly? The timing, everything, it's, it's, it's perfect. This is how you know it's the Father. I, there, how, there's no way I could have uh, 
foreseenness and planned this. I mean, it's it's incredible. All glory to the Most High Father. We worship you, we praise you, and we thank you for preparing us and giving us everything we need to be able to do the work that you have put us here on this earth to do, Holy Father. You have written our books before we, uh, you hear the sirens, sorry. You have uh, written our books before we were born, and you have put us here, Holy Father. And and we pray that you uh, that we that we pray that we continuously walk through our book and fulfill uh, the work that you would have us do, Holy Father. And may it be in your name for your glory and for your honor. In Yahushua Mashiach's holy name, we pray. Amen. All right, priests. So we are walking through our books. All right. And today I'm going to show you how everything we've learned so far, um, everything we've learned so far, I'm going to show you is present in the Hunger Games. And if you remember in the dream that I had, uh, the, the whole basis of this playlist, I was told to watch the Hunger Games. That was in my dream, I was told that. And so we watched, we, we broke down the first part and today we're gonna break down uh, the second uh, movie of The Hunger Games. In order to understand what The Hunger Games, the second movie of The Hunger Games is explaining to us, we have to understand the hexagon. Now, the hexagon is a message that we've received. This is, you, you can see on the screen here, this goes back to uh, December the 3rd, 2019. I think even we started receiving this hexagon message before this point, but this is the one that I have to show you from Priest Poli. And we can see that we have the 9-11 here. I tell you, everything is 9-11 nowadays. I woke up this morning at 9-11, I'm telling you. So uh, she says that she was praying flat in the tree position. Uh, the tree position, as we know, is the 6-6. And I will be coming back to that very soon. We, we have major confirmation about the 6-6, six, six, the sweetness of the children of Abraham. It's, it's amazing. Just miraculous. Just miraculous. She was shown the clear vision of Holy Yahushua on the beach, facing towards the water. Almost instantly, he wore a red and antique white robe. The beach was familiar it was the beach area on Maui where Mama's fish house is. And she was shown a hexagon with 16 polygons. So 16 times two, 32. So this is when we started really receiving the hexagon message. And if you remember last week, I, or two weeks ago, we started explaining how we live in uh, the beehive right? And the beehive is made of, what does this look like? Exactly. It looks like a beehive. That's why it's symbolically, symbolically represented as a beehive. So uh, here you can see the beehive. Okay. So why is a beehive shaped like a hexagon? When bees make hexagons in their hives, the six-sided shapes fit together perfectly they can hold the queen bee's eggs and store the pollen and honey and the worker bees bring to the hive. When you think about it, making circles wouldn't work too well. It would leave gaps in the honeycomb. So here, just to remind you, the honeycombs are hexagons. So priests, this is Holy Spirit inspired um, information. I'm, I will try to vocalize here for you. Today we're going to be talking about the hexagon and we're going to be looking at it through DNA. We're going to be looking at it through prophecy, scripture, and we're going to be looking at it in the real world, in uh, movies, and trying to understand the significance of the matrix being made of hexagons us, our bodies being made of hexagons, and also our spiritual bodies, uh, us being the heaven, heaven's bees, and what this represents. We're going to be taking it apart piece by piece. But what the Holy Spirit has given me to share with you, biblical understanding of this comes from Samson uh, in Judges 14. And you can see here on the screen, it's just a random, 
it's just a random website that I just googled Samson's uh, honeycomb lion and it just popped up and so I'm just using it as visual. As I explain this, um, if I start speaking in tongues, I just want you to understand I'm allowing myself to do this publicly now because usually I don't, I only do it privately. I've had the gift of speaking in tongues since I was a child. The reason I'm doing it is because Holy Spirit is telling me that it is important for all of us to begin to uh, learn to speak in tongues or be given uh, Father's heavenly language to be able to speak in tongues. If you already can speak in tongues, then you need to be doing this daily. This needs to be now, if you haven't been doing it before, it now needs to become a daily occurrence. Just like in the video I showed you at the beginning, uh, this video right here, uh, this brother was explaining the importance of waking up, waking up, speaking in tongues, taking the fi fire from heaven uh, every morning as soon as you wake up. So uh, this is what I've been doing recently and it has changed my life. And so those who are able to do it, do it. Um, those who do not yet have the ability to do it, pray on this, work on this, and I will be back at another time to to help and to encourage um, all of us to, to get to that point where we're able to speak in tongues. Uh, for the moment, if you're not able to speak in tongues, then as soon as you wake up, you, you tell the Father, yes, Father, I, I want to walk through my book uh, that you have written for my life before I was born. Yes, Father, to your way, to your will in my life on earth as it is in heaven. And you, you reach up and you grab uh, some of his fire from his throne and you put it on yes. you, you know, and you just burn Nikomasha and then you worship. If you can't speak in tongues, you just work, worship for a few seconds. This is the first thing I do when I wake up and it has changed my life miraculously for the better. So, um, please start to do that a priest. But I wanted to bring that up because now Holy Spirit has been encouraging me to allow myself to speak in tongues if that happens naturally and I will do the best I can to interpret if that does happen. The reason I'm saying that is because this information is not coming from my brain. <laughs> this is coming from the Holy Spirit. Okay, priest. In Judges 14, Samson kills a lion and leaves the body there. When, it com when he comes back to it, a swarm of bees has uh, had taken over and there is honey and there is now honey there. So Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring towards him. The spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him and so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down to talk to the woman and he liked her. Sometimes later, when he went back to marry her, he, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass and in it he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate it and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some and they ate too. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. This is a 1412 in Judges. This is Samson's riddle. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can give me the answer within the seven days of the feast, I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. So priests, I want you to understand here that this seven days feast is um, symbolic of the seven day appointed uh, calendar that I showed you last week that you can see on the screen with the rainbow colors. And the seventh millennia is the day of rest as we've talked about last week and we had that confirmation in letter line 20. So right here when it says the seven days of the feast, it's talking about if you can understand this by this time, the seventh uh, day, the seventh millennia, the, 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 this millennia when holy Yahushua will return right here, the seven days. I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. Now, priest. Okay, so we will uh, break down the letter line 30 at some point, but we, we are not going to be able to do it right now. But what I want you to uh, notice is that when Holy Yahushua was betrayed by Judas, it, he was uh, the price was 30 pieces of silver. So again, we have the 30, right? 30 garments and 30 set of clothes 
what I want you to understand here is symbolically when we're talking about garments and clothes. This is uh, Revelation 19. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife had made, made herself ready. So this is talking about getting on your clothes. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So this is this um, clothes is symbolic for the righteousness of the saints and being made ready uh, for uh, to be received by Holy Yahushua or for him to receive us as his bride. Do you, do you see this? This is Revelation 19. So right here, this line, the 30, the 30 linen garments and clothes is symbolic of us being prepared and ready for Holy Yahushua's return or for him to call us with a shout to, uh, be, to be righteous. That is what this is uh, symbolic of. We take off this old fleshly body and we put on the new uh, body. Another scripture to help you, this is Philippians, I believe it's 3.21. Who shall change our vile body, this is the vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. I don't think I need to explain that. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So this is Philippians 3, 21, I believe. This is what we're talking about symbolically when he's talking about getting the 30 garments and the, the clothes. Because Holy Yahushua was betrayed for 30 uh, pieces of silver. So it's talking about the redemption price, him dying on Calvary being our um, ransom. I pray that this is being clear. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. So this is talking about accepting or rejecting uh, Holy Yahushua's ransom price that he paid on Calvary. Those who accept it, you get your new clothes, your new body. And uh, in that seventh day right here, um, the seventh day, if you know this by the seventh day, then you will be at rest. You will be at peace. You will be uh, redeemed and saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Those who don't, they have to give up, uh, you know, their, their redemption because they refused uh, to accept the ransom price that he paid. So that is what all of this is about here. This part about, this is the riddle. Tell us the riddle, they said, let us hear it. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. So in this riddle is exactly what I will try to show you in this video and in the upcoming videos. The lion, as it says in scripture, uh, we know that we have the lion of Judah. It, it represents different things. But here in this symbolism, it is representing uh, the matrix. It is representing, uh, it is representing 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion sinking whom he may devour. And again, this um, completely matches with what we were talking about last week in Revelation 12, where we understood that the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered to devour, to devour her child as soon as it was born. So right here, we have again the devouring uh, and Satan as a lion in this symbolism. So in this uh, riddle, we, we know that it's Satan because the spirit of the Lord came over uh, Samson and allowed him to tear the lion apart, okay? So this is exactly what I was explaining in the, the, the video about men in black, how the Melchizedek are not in the matrix, right? We are out of the matrix. So, oh, and I was explaining last week how we are not in Davy Jones's locker. We are free. We are on that highway, right? Um, that is also in scripture. So when you are a free man, this is symbolically you tearing the lion. This is you tearing the matrix. This is you taking power over it and it becomes null and void. Do you understand the symbolism? 
So the lion being symbolic for the matrix, the evil one, who you rip to shreds through the Holy Spirit when you come into the truth, when you accept Holy Yahushua's uh, ransom that he paid on Calvary and you come out of her, my people, come out of her. That is what happens. So after that happens, the honeycomb is no longer your prison, but it becomes sweet. It becomes the promised land. It is therefore transformed as we have at the end of, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Spirit, for this knowledge. This is this is amazing. This is, is transformed like in, at the, in, in Revelation, at the end of the book, okay, when um, hell and Hades is thrown into uh, the fire, uh, the, the pit, and it is destroyed. Um, this, so the people who are in hell, hell and everything of hell will be completely destroyed because the, the matrix is an illusion. It is not real. What is real is heaven and heavenly things. You're, you're not really living until you uh, are saved through Holy Yahushua. You're not really living. You think you are. You're walking and you're talking and you're eating, but you're not really living. Not really. And so death and, and all of those things of evil will be destroyed. And at that point, New Jerusalem will come down out of the sky and we will inhabit this earth. This earth, the meek will in inherit the earth. Do you understand? So this carcass of this lion will become sweet. This will become the land of milk and honey. Do you understand? And it is through the process of us destroying that illusion and coming out of her that we become heaven's beads. Do you understand what I'm trying to, Holy Spirit is trying to say through me, please, priest, because this is not coming from me, okay? The matrix right now is a hive. It is an evil hive represented as the lion. We are the Melchizedek, those who have been restored to the promise. We will be, we are ripping that lion apart once we are free men and understand, um, accept the ransom that Holy Yahushua paid on the cross and we are no longer uh, blinded and in that matrix. We destroy it and that is the work that is going to be done now and in the end days through the harvest and the apocalypse and all these events at the end of, and the end times of revelation. That's why this is happening. We are ripping that lion like Samson did, okay? Once that happens, it will be restored okay? The evil will be destroyed, okay? And New Jerusalem will be coming and the meek will inherit this earth, this earth. And this is the land of milk and honey that we are promised. Right here, out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. Does that make sense? There's more to the story. Here on iPad Goat, you can see that um, this scene that we've decoded in the past, it is set inside the carcass. Here you can see the rib cage, and symbolically, it could be representing the lion's carcass. Also, there is a code with the 3030 that we will come back and talk about in another video. All glory to the Most High Father. And here, uh, there's some, this is Dr. Martin Emmerich. I don't know this guy, uh, but he's on the website here and he's explaining his uh, understanding of it. And the last line, it says, like bees in a carcass, Israel was to inhabit a country of idolaters, a country that became inhabitable for God's community only through the death of God's enemy. So he has it right here. He's just missing the point. He's just talking about history and historically this happened, but it, it goes bigger than that. Dr. Martin Emmerich, a Greek and Hebrew professor, if you ever watched this video. <laughs> God bless you, brother. Love you in Christ. Um, so what you said is awesome. And in addition to that, it's much bigger. It's not only talking about what happened in history. It's talking about the whole book. The whole purpose of all of this that we're going through is right here in this uh, riddle by Samson. It is for us to be 
God for the, the living God, the only real, true, most high father, living God to, to be our God, our father, and for us to be his people and for us to inhabit this land with him as our God and ruler and us as his people. But we're not slaves. We have free will. We have free choice. And we will be walking with him because we love him. Not because we're slaves. Not because we have to do anything. Because this is what we chose. And we become his children. And you know, his children, he is God. We become God's. And, and all of the promises that are written in the Bible and in his holy texts are true. So just go and read those. And this is, this is the point of it all create every all of it all of it this is the whole point right here what we're about to discuss with the hexagons and the bees and the matrix and all of it so uh, this is the point of it all the end the whole reason why we're studying this hexagon and the, the hives and the bees and the honey and all of this is because it explains in that little um, parable that I just showed you why we have to go through all of this. And it tells you right here in Revelation 21 and 22. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of, voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away every tear all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death no more sorrow no more crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away do you see this lion's carcass with the honey in it the honey the honey so um, if you want to have some encouragement and some strength to help you get through all of this, um, you can read Revelation 21 and uh, 22. They're beautiful. Um, and then you can see the, the water of life, which is the 22, 22, the two, 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 two. And you know, it gives a description of uh, New Jerusalem and all of these things. And it says right here, And he saith unto me, uh, Seal not the sayings of this prophecy of the book, for the time is at hand. And the time is at hand, priest, for us to be able to understand these things. Uh, so, priest, I just want to give you another word of encouragement. The What I just shared with you, I didn't know that before I came on camera and started talking. I didn't know this information. This information came to me as I was sharing it with you. And so that's why I want to encourage you to step forward and step forward in faith. If you step, this is your legs, if you take a step in the air, the ground will appear under your feet as you walk. Do you see what I mean? I did not know this information until I sat down in front of the camera and started speaking. And then Holy Spirit gave me what to say, as it says in scripture. So please, priest, begin to feed his sheep. Please, priest, begin to step out on faith. Please, priest, be obedient to Ruach HaKadosh and do what you are told to do. And you will be filled more. We're, we're about to start talking about the hexagon. And uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Sister, sorry, Priest Brittany received a dream about the hexagons. And what she saw was here, you see on the screen. Uh, this, is, this is the closest picture she could find to kind of explain to us what it was. It was, you know, very colorful like this. Uh, but even even more colorful than she could uh, find. Priest Poli sent this, and then Priest Brittany said, yes, that's it. It was kind of moving like this. And this is how we understood that the vision she had, Priest Vit Brittany, with the hexagons, is referring also to fractals. Okay, priest? So the hexagons, they refer to the beehive, the earthly beehive, as in the evil matrix, which we could call the black beehive. And Brother David had a vision about that. So Brother David received on um, the January 4th 
a message from uh, Holy Father about the black honeycomb. So let's listen to that. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Um, this morning, Father showed me a black gem. I don't know if it was a black gem, but it looked more like a like a hexagon, black gem, and I understood black honey, black honeycomb. It was like a little gem, and it looked like a hexagon gem. It looked like the shape of a hexagon, but it looked like a gem. It was weird. I was like, what? It was black, and it was honey, black honey, um, honeycomb or something like that. I was like, whoa, all right. And then he gave me several numbers too. He gave me, uh, I know, I think sister already did this one, 747, uh, 48, 144. He showed me that one, 44, 4, and 25, and 552. I'm going to put them down here. Matter if I'm going to take the picture of the paper so I can show you guys, okay? All right, guys, I love you all. God bless you, and I'll talk to you guys later. I think he gave me something else, but I'm trying to remember what it was. And also he showed me, uh, a lot of disaster and stuff like that. And the dream was kind of like gorish. So it's like, you no, know, I guess he was just showing me what's going to about to happen pretty soon. So, so uh, priest, what you just saw me do, I, I put it, I sped it up. Um, all I did was come here to the message that brother, uh, sorry, priest David received about the black honeycomb. And he had these numbers. So all I did was go backwards because, you know, in Hebrew, we read from um, right to left. So I just went to Strong's right here. And I just went, I just used the Greek because right now, for my purposes, I just want to find the clearest, easiest uh, understanding and put it into a sentence. And this is what Holy Spirit and this is what Holy Spirit has taught me to do. And this is how I'm able to write the letter lines. Um, this is how I was taught about the letter lines. I was taught that all of these things, they go together. So you're walking down the street and you keep seeing 44, 44, 44. You're like, what does 44 mean? And then tomorrow you're going to see 199. And you're like, what does that mean? You have to put 44 and 199 together. Do you see what I mean, priest? These are sentences that we're receiving each bit of information there it goes together that's why that's what i'm doing here in wakefulness theology i'm taking not only the messages that i'm receiving from the father but brothers and sisters in christ and we're putting it together and we're able to understand the more of the bigger picture this is what each and every one of us has to do in our lives and understand that you have a piece of this puzzle you have to be sharing as a priest do you understand so all I did was take this sentence. This is a sentence from the Most High Father. And this is explaining what the black honeycomb is. So as you saw me just put together, what does it say? It says, life without love is not burdensome. A fish hook it is. And then you can fill in the other words to help make sense. It is a fish hook of perception to purify and cleanse, from dis, uh, and cleanse the leaders from defilement. So let me just take, you know, just change the sentence so it makes a bit more sentence so you can understand. Life without love, not burdensome. So this life without love thing is the matrix, okay? Because this is where we are. When you are separated, the Most High Father is love. It says it in scripture, Most High, the Most High Father is love. OK, when you are in hell, you are separated from the Most High Father. That means there is no love. OK, so here on earth, we're not in hell uh, yet. We're not completely devoid of the Most High Father. But um, here on earth, it's a mix. So we have uh, the experience. Many people have the experience of not having love on this earth. This earth is the, the ruler of this world is is the evil one. So that means that the system and the world system is not of love. Right. It is not of the Most High Father. Are you following me? This is scriptural. I'm not making it up. So what it's saying is that us being in this matrix is not burdensome. What it is, is that it's a fish hook to um, give us the right perception, a heavenly perception, a Christ mind perception that will purify us and cleanse us from the caca as leaders. Do you see what I mean? It is complete confirmation of what I just told you from the Samson parable. Does that make sense? So if I had to write it a different way, I could say uh, living in the matrix, uh, which is often devoid of love is not burdensome, but a fish hook 
that helps, that causes us to have heavenly perception and cleanse, cleanses the leaders and cleanses the shepherds from, from evil. I don't know. So, uh, guys, I'm, I'm not saying that this is a, a great translation. What I'm doing is showing you how it works. You have to put these numbers that you receive into sentences. Now, the way that you do that, you know, you got to follow uh, Barak HaKadosh and, and you will be told the best way to do it. As you saw me do it here, I just went to Bible Hub. I picked the Greek. I put the words as they go and then through Holy Spirit, because I have already shown you the parable of 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 uh, the honey and the lion's corpse, uh, you can see how this is explaining the, the black honeycomb, which is the matrix. It is called the black honeycomb, which is without life, without love. And the reason we have to go through this life without love is so that we can be purified as his, his uh, priesthood to do this harvest so he can bring New Jerusalem down and we can take over, inherit this earth. Is that clear? Is it clear? So thank you, Priest um, David, for your obedience and sharing uh, your messages with us because, you know, when we received that message earlier, we received it nearly last month. We didn't know what it meant then. I didn't know what it meant until I just told you what it meant. And I just told you through Holy Spirit. I did not know that information. We're going to start looking at the hexagon and all the different things that hexagon means. And then I'm going to show it to you in the, the movie, um, The Hunger Games. Now, why is the hexagon everywhere all about this seemingly common shape? Fascinating facts about the most interesting geometrical shape that we find almost everywhere around us. So this is a science uh, interesting engineering website. And so you can see the hexagon in different places. In easy words, a hexagon is a simple shape with six sides, but this seemingly simple shape is nothing less than a wonder. You might even be surprised to know that hexagonal shape is presented throughout your life and nature in more places than one. So we're gonna look at the different hexagonal patterns in, in the world. Uh, the first one they say is a beehive, that's the most common, uh, where each cell is a hexagon. Let us see why Hexagon has so many stories, mysteries, and accolades attached to it. So we have Saturn. They have a hexagon here. You see the hexagon on Saturn? Okay, here we got the bees, the eyes of the dragonfly. This is a, a tourist spot in Ireland where each of the stones are hexagons. It's called the Giant's Causeway Bubble Raft bubbles that are hexagons this is important the snowflake i'm going to show you some in snow bob with the snowflake right here it's hexagons hexagon on a turtle shell so we have it on turtles everything begins with carbon so you may fail to notice a hexagon in yourself but you need to remember that there are several billions of them in our bodies that you can than you can ever imagine. It all comes down to the element that is present in our body, carbon. <laughs> Maybe that's why there's a war on carbon. <laughs> this element is even present in our DNA and makes up the human body. <laughs> From head to toe, you are a big hexagon, okay? Between me and you, you is a big hexagon, all right? If you were to study the atomic structure of organic material like the human skin or flesh, you would find a series of carbon hexagon chains that are nicely packed together. We are just big hexagons. Okay, so here we got the nuts and bolts are hexagons. Footballs are hexagons. You know, there's a reason why they have these here. It's like a... a brainwashing uh, hypnot it hypnotizes you hypnotizes you watch a soccer game and watch how they run after this ball it is straight hypnotism so mo the modern day football is a mix of hexagons and pentagons it is made of patches of 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons your everyday pencils hexagons so it's a part of every day of our life it's it's everywhere
and we never talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's like literally the basis, the structure of creation. And they, they don't teach you this in school and we never talk about it. Isn't that amazing? Here are some images so you can see the hexagonal DNA images. For example, a molecule, a DNA molecule, this is what it looks like. They are hexagons. Do you see? This is what you are made of. You are made, you're just a big hexagon. This is your DNA. It's made of hexagons, the molecules. You feel me, priest? So uh, here is another post from priest. A poly, I don't have the date on this, but I can tell you it was a while ago. She was uh, showing Revelation 19, 16. We know that the 19 and the 16 is very important. Uh, it's, it's a part of turning the key, the 9, 6. We also have, the. it also reflects the 400 years of slavery, which is August 16, 19 from 16, 19. Remember we talked about that last week? Well... Here you go. Revelations 19, 16. Is it a coincidence? Do you believe in coincidences? I'm just pointing these things out. Do what you want to do with the information. Take it to the Most High Father. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Glory be to the Father, Yahuwah. And then she wrote Hexagon, Building Block of Life, DNA Blueprint, Genetic Code, Metatron's Cube. So what she's pointing out here, which uh, we didn't understand back when we got this message from the Holy Spirit, but now we do, putting it together, um, this is telling us about the building blocks of creation. We not only have the black honeycomb, but we have heaven's bees, which we turn into when you rip that lion apart. When you rip Samson's lion, meaning becoming a men in black, a man, a men in black, then you get a new, just like it says right here in the Philippians 3.21, who shall change our vile body that it may, may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That is what happens. We're talking about transformation here from the very building blocks of life and creation itself down to your molecules. Are you hearing me, priests? And if you think this is flippy information, you better put your seatbelt on because I'm just, we just building up to the, to the, to the, to it. This is just what you have to understand to be able to get with the real, the, the big stuff. All right. So if you're not caught up on these videos, please catch up. Because when, when we reveal, when, when uh, we get to the point that Holy Spirit has, has taught me and, and told me to share with you, when we get to that point and you reject it, you're rejecting the word of the Most High Father. So you need to go back and make sure you're caught up on this information so you are able to discern for yourself and able to take it to the Most High Father and able to receive this word. Because this is huge what we're learning here right now in this playlist. So it is very important in this Bible verse when it says that his name was written on his thigh because that is where you take DNA samples. So for example, here, leg bone gives up oldest DNA, human DNA. Uh, so we got the oldest man uh, having his DA, DNA in his thigh bone. You have a French student who injects um, the Bible and Quran, she, they turned it into DNA and they injected it into their thigh. So why do we have, what is the connection with DNA and the thigh? So our thighs genetic, here's what they found. The genes operating in a person's thigh fat are hugely different from those in his or her belly fat. For men, 125 genes are expressly different in the belly than in the thighs. For women, 218 genes are more unique to women, but 59 genes are the same as those in the male. So there's something particular about the DNA and the thighs. So what I'm showing you is that there is a reason in this Bible verse that they said on his thigh, 
his name is written because if you guys know the most high father's name is written in our dna do you remember look on the screen we prove we've proven this in the past his name is written in our dna and so that's what this bible verse is alluding to that that it's the dna and so if his name is written in our dna and our dna molecules are made of hexagons it seems like the hexagon would be the symbol representing his name wouldn't it take it to the most high father this is what it seems to be saying this is what holy spirit seems to be teaching us and telling us right here this symbol the hexagon is symbolic for the Most High Father's name. If his name is written in our DNA, and right here it says his name is written on our thigh, and we know that th this is symbol, symbolic for DNA, then that's what it is right here. This is symbolically his name, the hexagon. And that would make total sense why the enemy would take it and make it a black hexagon. Because as we say always, they take and they usurp and they turn upside down and, um, defile all things and all things were made by the most high father of the most high father through the most high father it matches priests that's what we're looking at right here we're looking at the dna of the most high father the hexagon his name symbolically and it is what will transform us from the black honeycomb to heaven's bees through the process, through the process of living in the matrix, which is devoid of love, but not burdensome because it's a fish hook that causes us to have heavenly perception and cleanses us from evil, the black honeycomb and us being transformed into our glorious bodies from the vile body of the black honeycomb. Do you guys see this? You're with me so far? So um, we can see this all over the place. Like I said, you don't have to believe me or take my word for it. <laughs> it's everywhere you look, everywhere, every movie, every song, every everywhere, okay, um, if you can see it. So just to show you some examples, this is the character Jean Grey uh, from the X-Men. And I want you to understand what does the X and X-Men stand for? This is uh, Professor Xavier's name and X-Men, it stands for the mutants. It's an extra, extra special powers that comes from the X factor or the X gene, their DNA that gave them unique, their unique abilities. It is called the X gene. And this is the movie X-Men, the dark Phoenix. So priest, now we understand. So right here, when we're saying the black honeycomb, from, from Priest David's uh, Dreamer Vision. Now you can see the Dark Phoenix. The Dark Phoenix, this is the same as the Black Honeycomb. What I want you to understand is that in this movie, I don't have time to go over the movie, but watch it yourself. And if you have spiritual eyes, if you've been watching all these videos, you should be able to see for yourself very clearly that here, the the word phoenix phoenix right here is symbolic for the x gene the x gene is the god gene that i just showed you from sister Polly's message this gene right here written on the most high on on holy yahushua's thigh his name King of King and Lord of Lords, we're talking about when you are no longer in the black honeycomb, but you have been redeemed and now you are of heaven's honeycomb. You have his name written in you and this is the X gene. When the Most High Father's name that is in our DNA gets activated because you are redeemed. You have accepted the, the ransom that Holy Yahushua paid on Calvary and you have been transformed. You have accepted that hook. Everything we're doing here is a hook. All of it. Me understanding the holy letters back in uh, 1999, that was a hook. That was Holy Father saying, come on girl, let me show you the way. Right? It's a hook. 
And that's why we're fishers of men, fishers of men. We're, we're, we're fishing with the hook, the truth, the way and the life. Are you understanding the symbology? So when this event in heaven that happens that is prophesied in Revelation in the stars with whatever is going on, planet X, Beetlejuice, I don't know, but it's happening in the stars and it's happening now, okay? When these events, these prophesied events that are in heaven are happening now and as it continues, it is going to be, as you can see right here in this picture, you see the lightning you see the lightning going into her and transforming her, just like we've been talking about. That is what happens in this movie right here, okay? She gets transformed and then her X gene is activated and then she becomes the phoenix. Now in this movie, they're calling it dark phoenix because they turn everything upside down. They're afraid of us. This right here happening to them is the most terrifying thing you could say to them. Because when we get activated and the body of Christ is here on earth, completely mature, when we've completed these five levels and we become her spiritually, we're going to be ripping the lion. We're going to be destroying the matrix. Do you understand? We're going to be pulling out his people. Okay? So this is the most terrifying thing that the evil ones could ever do. Imagine happening outside of Holy Yahushua actually physically when he comes back himself. But until he actually physically comes back himself, him manifesting in us, like I showed you in that I Pet Goat video last week, is horror horrific for them. Okay, they're running and screaming and crying in terror, and that is why they are um, trying to kill us right now before we can be transformed. Like I've been showing you in the past few videos, for those who have been uh, had the uh, uh, discipline to watch this X gene, which is the God gene in us that is going to be and is being activated through the lightning branch, which is Holy Yahushua, like He said He was going to do in it, like it is written in Scripture. I'm not saying nothing that ain't written in Scripture. When this happens, it is symbolically called the Phoenix. We are symbolically called the Phoenix when we transform. So the X-Men are us, those who have the God gene activated and are transformed into the, into the Melchizedek priesthood. We are the leaders who will be going out and doing the harvest, catching those fish tearing that lion and 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 walking through our books as it has been written in scripture are you feeling me priest watch the movie it's right there for you to see if you have spiritual eyes and you have um, uh, gone through the process of understanding the spiritual manna that we have been blessed with you will be able to see it it's as clear as day in the movie as clear as day and just be careful you know they turn upside down uh, right side up they make things um, upside down so they make the good guys the bad guys the bad guys the good guys they give the good qualities to the bad people and the bad qualities to the good people and all of that but if you hopefully if you've been following you know by now um, um, how to discern even with the the lies and the tricks that they do in the movies um, so just to remind you in scripture uh, we have two things going on we have the escape um, and before the escape happens, we have to be transformed. And that's why we said last week that the escape, what Christians want to call, I'm not talking about the rapture doctrine, but what most Western uh, Christians are calling the rapture, that is uh, a process that is happening right now. So the, um, the escape is happening right now. We are in the process of being uh, transformed right now. I just want to remind you that uh, Ruach, uh, the Ruach, or the Holy Spirit, is referred to as the wind. It resembles the breath, um, life. Uh, it also is uh, being represented as like this nebula with these particular colors here. Um, and we were saying that this nebula, which is also considered a gas cloud in deep space, this is what we're looking at when we're talking about when we're talking about Holy Yahushua coming through the portals right? So I just want to remind you about the colors and um, 
what it looks like when in the scriptures it's talking about he's coming on the clouds. This is what we're understanding that the scriptures are referring to as clouds. These this nebula, um, these dimension, these dimensions that will be opened as he comes through uh, the events that will be happening in the stars. This is a picture from uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, season three, episode six, and it's called the Snowball Effect. And um, it's, you know, there's numbers here. Someone can look them up and see what they say. But um, I just want to show you that in SpongeBob, they're showing you right here the hexagons because we know that snowflakes are hexagons. We just learned that. Uh, and we learned that uh, hexagons are the building blocks of our DNA molecules. We've, we've also learned that the Most High Father's name is written in our DNA and that in scriptures, Revelation um, 1916 it is explaining that it is written on his thigh which we understand is his uh, DNA his name written in our DNA and here in SpongeBob SquarePants they are telling us this but only those who have the Holy Spirit are able to understand it do you understand do you hear me priest they say it in our face all day every day and the laymen don't know any better. They don't see it. They can't hear it. And even if you point it out to them, they're going to be like, nah. This is why they mock us. Because instead of feeding yourself this spiritual manna so that you can get closer to the Father and be saved, instead of eating this spiritual manna so that you can feed Holy Yahushua's sheep, the majority of us are more concerned with basketball, celebrities, the Grammys, the newest singer, the newest clothes, the newest trends, the newest gossip, instead of this information that is right in front of our face. And that is why they mock us. Right here, it couldn't be any clearer. It couldn't be any clearer. They're telling you right here. And that's why they have the snowflake on iPad Goat with uh, and behind Obama laughing at us. That's why, because it's right in front of our face every day and you can't see it. Even if we point it out, the majority of people won't be able to see it. Only his called and chosen can understand this.